Hi there, welcome to Cloud Native Skunk Works. This video is writing a Prometheus exporter from IDE to deployed in 30 minutes. And without any further ado, we'll start the clock. If you followed some of my previous videos, you'll know that we've looked at operators and we've looked at how do we build an operator with the basic components. We're gonna follow the same premise today of how do we build an, um, an exporter. And we'll be using the Prometheus library and we'll be using client go library as well, like we did before in the operator. On top of that, just like in real life, when we want to build something, we'll use what we've already got. So we'll be heavily leveraging the operator code from the previous videos. The idea here is that we'll have a metrics endpoint that we can serve out information and perhaps have a gauge metric about how many pods are running in the cluster. So we could say pod count, the current pod count. Okay, so as we look over to my screen on the left, you can see I've got a very basic setup. I've just built a main.go that has some flag passing, and nothing else in it really. So I'm gonna grab what I need from the operator that we've had from the previous videos. First and foremost, I need a cube config. I need to be able to open up that config and get out my default client set. From here, you can see what I'm doing is using client command and Kubernetes, both of which need to be imported. So let's uh, grab client command and Kubernetes, which are here from the client go library. And we also need a logger. So let's grab logros. Perfect. So now at this point in time, we should be able to check if we can connect to our Kubernetes cluster, which for me is a kind cluster running locally. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check my uh, launch JSON config. You can see I've co coded my cube config here. And let's go ahead and run that. I don't really expect it to do anything at this point in time. Uh, great, so it's built the config from flags and it's exited out. Because we're building a Prometheus exporter, the most important thing that we can add into this straight away is the Prometheus setup. So Prometheus HP handler, Prometheus metrics, runtime loop, great. So if I go down now to here, we can see that we've got Prometheus handler set up from our, our operator from the last video. It's effectively running on another Go routine and it uses prom HTTP. So this is the first time we've used this. So let's add in prom HTTP as the library. And we're also gonna need prom auto later on as well. Um, but we'll, we'll come into that later on. So now we'll be serving metrics on this address. The next thing we need to do is to tell Prometheus uh, the kind of metric that we want to expose. So let's say it goes back to what we decided here about the CNS current pod count. So let's create that metric, CNS current pod count. And that is where we use prom auto. Prom auto is a convenience library um, that allows us to return a new gauge, a new counter, a new histogram, or a new summary uh, with a lot of convenience utilities baked into that. So let's create a new gauge. And in there, you can see we've got Prometheus library also being used to populate that. So let's make sure we've got everything we need. So from memory, I seem to recall it was prom auto is the second library. And then we also need to have Prometheus, which I think is the root level library here. So we can see now that's happy. However, for this to really work, we do need to do a few more things. So setting the name to CNS current pod count is one. And then we'll also set help. Counts the number of pods running in the cluster, which is great. That's obviously not doing anything just yet, but we'll come back to this a little later on. So we have our cube config that gets started up. We're exposing our metrics endpoint, and we understand from our previous video in the part three of our operator uh, discovery on observability, how we then wire this in to be exposed as a metric. Now, this is the, the final component is how do we wire this all together and make sense of what's going on in the cluster? Well, let's create a for loop. And in that for loop, we get to decide what needs to happen. We want to periodically check whether pods uh, are active and how many are active in the cluster. So let's set an arbitrary timeout of say time.sleep um, and that's gonna be time, yeah, every five, 10 seconds, we will go through this loop. So we want to fetch 
pods in cluster. Update metric. So fetch pods, how do we do that? Well, we've got our Kubernetes client. So we call this our default client. So I'm going to rename that something slightly more convenient to cube client. And our cube client, we can call core v1 API pods list. And pods list, we're going to pass in the meta v1 list options object. Meta v1 list options, um, I think comes from the API machinery, but Let's have a look. Meta v1. I will have to check it from inside of the operator from last time because we use Meta v1 on our lookup inside of our uh, subscriptions. So let's try the pod subscription. And there you see we've got Meta v1, and that provides us the argument, the option list for our list. So the response here is that we don't have enough arguments. That's because we don't have a context being passed in. So what we can do just here is to pass in. Um, a context to do or a background context. You see that's in the list there. So let's do context dot to do. And that should populate inside of our imports here as well, you can see. And the return from this is going to be a pod list and an error. So pod list error. Now, if there's an error, we probably want to continue uh, to some degree or to throw a warning. So if there's an error, we'll go log error, error fetching pods, which is great. Also, if there is no error, that's when we want to update the metric. So the metric, which is set here, which was going to be named our CNS pod current count. So CNS pod current uh, count. We can put that here. And we say that sets to the pod list dot items length because that's the number of pods in that cluster. So let's go ahead and test this. That's a super quick, uh, dirty implementation. Let's just see if this works. Okay, so that's building Convoy from flags. The next thing I want to do is go to localhost on AD80 slash metrics. And you can see here we have the current pod count of 10. Well, let's make sure that this is actually correct. So if I go into K9s here, and let's delete something. So I think I have a few different pieces running in here. Um, I've got the local path provisioner that has a pod uh, associated with it. So if I go to the deployment for the local path provisioner and I remove that from K3s, uh, sorry, from kind, you'll see that that should decrease my pod count. So what I should expect to see is that oh, after a few seconds, the current pod count will decrease. So now you can see there it's gone down to nine. So we've built that really basic exporter, but we're not there yet. We need to get this up and running. We need to get this into our cluster. So next thing we need to do is to write a Docker file. Again, this is a standard Golang Docker file. We just want to package up this binary and send it on its way. So I am going to shamelessly lift as much of this code as I need to uh, from the other pro project. So I don't need to do versioning on the main. I don't need build flags. All I need to do is to produce the binary and we're going to call this CN Skunkworks Prometheus exporter. That goes here and it replaces the operator and there. What I'm going to do is at this point in time it's necessary to probably start thinking about having some utility in this folder. So let's make a make file and we'll say make uh, dot phony docker build and we'll have a docker build just here, and that Docker build is going to do the following. It is going to go ahead and create our, that's my Docker name, so we'll call it that, Skunkworks, and Prometheus Exporter. Great. Let's go ahead and build that. So if I change into the directory, I will go to code, CN Skunkworks, Prometheus Exporter, make Docker build. And that has not worked. Hang on, I have done something wrong here. Let me remove this just now. Uh, Docker build. I think I might need to change something. No need for alarm. I'll set it as the all target for now, just for the sake of the speed run of this video. Uh, Oh, well, there's no make file, so that's interesting. 
Oh, and we can see what Alex has done wrong here is that I put my make file inside my VS code, code folder. So let's pull that out of the VS code folder. It's no good at being in there. It's not gonna do anything in there. So let's try again. So make Docker build, the way we go. Um, that's not working. We're also gonna do a Docker push. So Docker push, and then we're going to grab our image, which is great. So now that image will get pushed out and that'll be our newly fledged exporter. On top of this, we need to do a few more things. We need to have a Helm chart that deploys our exporter and we also need to have a service monitor. That service monitor will tell Prometheus to scrape from our exporter. If you're not familiar with service monitors, they're very easy to find online with lots of guidance around it. So as you can see, if we go down into getting started with the Prometheus operator, it has some advice on how to create service monitors and they just have selectors and they're super simple. Okay, so let's do a docker push um, hyphen. I'm going to prepare to write the um, Helm chart. So I put a docker push dash T, which I don't need because I'm not building it. And I also didn't define a tag on my build for now, so it's assuming it's going to be called latest. And whilst that's working, I'm going to create a new Helm chart. So Helm create, uh, we'll call this chart. In fact, no, we won't. We'll call it CN Skunkworks Prometheus Exporter. But from the top level, we all call it chart. So CN Skunkworks, and we'll call it chart. There we go. So now we have our Helm chart here. For the values, we want to set up the repository and a few other things. In my previous video with the operator deployment, I took more time to cut this out, but we're speed running this. So we're gonna go with just the bare essentials. So what we can do is get rid of the HPA, the ingress. Um, I'm not gonna delete out things like the helpers because they can be useful at providing things like the name of the release, but I will get out, get rid of the other bits I don't need. So the service I will need, the target, I'm gonna create a new target port. So the target port is gonna be metrics with the name of metrics. And the service port value is gonna be set to 8080. So if we go to service port here, 8080, that can stay as cluster IP. In our deployment down here within Helm, you can see that the container port is set to HTTP, that needs to be called metrics and that needs to be switched to 8080 as well so that the service and the deployment match. Now that's done, I have a push Docker image. I am able to set up the next step and that is how to get that image. So the image repository comes first, and then the image tag. So the image repository is going to be set inside of the values file at the top. Um, and we're gonna set that to tibber slash CN skunkworks. And in fact, let me just grab the whole thing here. And the tag uh, will be latest. Perfect. I also mentioned having uh, a service monitor. So we've got our service account, but we need to create a service monitor. So let's go ahead and make one. Now, looking just at the documentation here, we can grab a service monitor that looks like this. But what do we need to change? Well, it's not too dissimilar from the service. So let's look at what's in the service and we'll take the best of it and use that. So you can see that firstly, the name would be convenient to use the same name. And also the labels would be convenient to use as well so that they're matching. It's also important that we have the selectors that match as well. So the selector I can set here on the match labels. And apart from that, the endpoints need to be set to metrics. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. Uh, we, might, we might hit some row bumps, but if we don't try, we don't know. So let's write a deploy, so deploy. And that will be going into Helm, uh, install, CN Skunkworks Prometheus. It's a bit of a mouthful, this exporter. And that will be from chart. And then we will have namespace equals, we'll put it into default for now. Okay, and I might have forgotten a few things there. So let's just check, see what we got. Okay, so uh, the service monitor hasn't been installed because I don't have the Prometheus operator running in this cluster, but that's something we can remedy in just a few clicks. 
So I will go off and grab the Prometheus operator. First thing is that I don't find this documentation particularly accessible. I just want a one click, one line installer. So I'm gonna grab cube prom stack, which I find a much more accessible um, Helm chart. There you go, like these guys get it. Let's grab that and then we will do an install of cube prom stack. We'll go uh, cube control, create namespace. Uh, in fact, no, we'll just put it in the default as well. I don't have to deal with um, different namespaces. We'll call it prom and this will give us the right CRDs because service monitor is a CRD. So that's a custom resource definition, which means that it needs an open API spec uh, installation um, YAML that describes to the cube control, the Kubernetes API, how those objects should look within the cluster. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like within the cluster. And we can see now our exporter is running. If we go to port forward, should be able to see our exporter running just here. There we go, pod count of 16. So now we've got our pods correctly being monitored through our metrics. We've seen that it's pretty straightforward to deploy our exporter into the cluster. And we've written our Docker file, our Helm chart. It's important to just reflect on what we've actually done. So Prometheus has actually been instructed now by an, a service monitor that lives here, which we set up, that the service it's going to monitor is here at the exporter. And we told it about the service monitor and it is therefore going to scrape from this exporter here. And our exporter is exposing what comes from our pods. All of this code I'm pushing online so that you can play around with it and look to build your own exporters from. Thank you so much for watching this video. I wanted to demonstrate how it is possible to write a Prometheus exporter and get it deployed out in less than half an hour. I know that a lot of the techniques that I've shown might have gone through fairly quickly and I haven't covered every corner case. We haven't looked at CRDs. We've looked at fairly simplistic deployments, but you know what? If you need to get an exporter out there, you can definitely do so. Um, please like and subscribe if you think these videos are good. Let me know through comments what you want to see next and thanks. See you next time.